I'm here with Mike Jones of Film and Video Umbrella at Jerwood Space on the South Bank in London. FBU often exhibit their artists' work at Jerwood. Mike, what does Film and Video Umbrella do? Film and Video Umbrella, or FVU, is an arts organisation and we're involved with visual artists who work with film, video and digital media as their chosen means of making their contemporary artworks. How are artists using AV in their installation works? Artists are working in all sorts of different ways with audiovisual and as an organisation that's involved in commissioning that work and producing that work and presenting and touring that work, it's our job to try and, if you like, keep up with the way in which artists want to work with the technology, but also it's about leading uh, artists to appropriate types of presentation solutions, appropriate types of production solutions and so on. Because it's not always the case, it's not always one-way traffic. It, we can get great ideas from artists, things that throw up all sorts of technical challenges or logistics challenges, presentation challenges, and we love a challenge. Uh, but equally, one of the things that we do is to work with an artist and say, OK, did you know about this? Are you aware of this particular way of showing work? Are you aware of this particular presentation technology? Are you aware of this particular audio technology? And try and introduce people to ideas about how they could show their work that could enhance the ideas in the work. What are the challenges with the venues? Well, one of the things that we realised very early on when we got involved in the commissioning of new work was that we couldn't rely on the galleries and museums that we are showing that work in to have uh, necessarily appropriate audiovisual technology or even in some cases any at all. We don't have a vast array of technology available. We've had to be very, very astute in the way in which we've invested in the technology. So uh, basic amount of uh, HD projection across a, an, a range of different types of imaging technology, different brightnesses of projector and so on. Um, some good baseline uh, professional audio kit, studio monitor type uh, audio playback, that kind of thing. We're involved in touring. We're not a venue. So we're working with a series of venues throughout the UK. We're touring shows from one to the other. And we effectively have to creatively reuse that equipment. But it's about having a set of kit that we can work with that gives us a baseline of quality. Is 4K or ultra high definition a relevant format for you? Absolutely. Artists are shooting at 4K, certainly. Some are post-producing at 4K, albeit they're wrestling with the, the data requirements of that, but that's what they're doing. The challenge at the moment is actually delivering at that level in the gallery. So what we've been working on over the last uh, 6 to 12 months or so is artists who might have shot some material 4K, but the, the delivery is actually at HD level. But I think in a little bit like the, in back in the old standard definition days, and we had that transition going through to HD, where material was often being shot HD but couldn't be shown HD, we've certainly seen the benefits of having shot it that way in the first place. Uh, where we're being held back slightly, I think, is in the projection uh, area, because uh, the more affordable 4K projectors that have appeared so far have been pretty much aimed at the home cinema market. We're not seeing super bright projectors being produced at that level at the moment, unless actually we're talking about cinema projectors, which is way beyond our scope and capability to be able to afford that. So I'm waiting for these I'm waiting for the 4K projection to come on stream and then I think we'll just see artists work just being uh, seen at that kind of level routinely. Now with the technology changing as fast as it is, how are you able to keep up with it and do you get involvement from the manufacturers to assist you? I think there are opportunities to, I would hope, to engage with manufacturers of AV kit and actually say, look, this is a this is a vibrant area, there's a lot going on in this particular area, you're getting really, really key audiences walking through the doors of the kind of galleries that are showing this work. You're right at the cutting edge of what artists are trying to do. Let's get on the cutting edge with what you're able to do as manufacturers in terms of delivering that content. That's a, a source of some frustration, I have to say, that uh, I think manufacturers are not really recognising the opportunity that is there for them. How do you manage artists' expectations? Very early on, even at Rush's stage, I'll try and get the artist in, we'll put it through a couple of different types of projector, we'll project it at a particular scale. So what we want to avoid is a situation where the artist goes, well, hang on a minute, why doesn't it look as great as I saw it when I was peering into my 17-inch uh, laptop with all the lights out in my studio? 
And I think the thing that's quite different from the way that film and video umbrella work compared to uh, you know, perhaps in the broader commercial AV sector is that we're there with the artist at the point in which they've coming up with the original idea. We're there with the artist when we're developing that idea. It might be script development, it might be uh, storyboard development or research into how we want it to look. We're there with the artist when they're shooting on location or in the studio. We're there with them following it through in terms of the post-production. And we're also there in the gallery on the day that it gets installed. We want to make sure that we get the best out of the artist's work and the artist gets the best out of the experience of working with film and video umbrella. And the way to do that is to try and make sure we're involved in all of those stages, but that we get an understanding from the artist of what's possible, how things are going to change. And also that informs the way in which they might make that work. So if they know how it's going to look in the final delivery, that helps them make decisions about how they actually make the work in the first place. What are the greatest technical challenges you're coming across? Each gallery is very, very different. So you can't expect to have a perfect black box environment to show the work in necessarily every time. So for example, right now, I'm working with artist Ravi Deepra on a, a new film called The Gain Line. And it's a rugby themed piece of work which investigates all sorts of aspects of that work from the history of the game through to trying to look at innovative technology in terms of uh, placing cameras on players, using laser scanning to try and uh, give some sense of a, a kind of an X-ray vision of the game as it's uh, emerging and so on. Then we've got the task of going into three different gallery spaces. So we've got one space which is circular, we've got one space which is a huge 18 metre long, seven and a half metre high, eight metre wide space that's all white. And then uh, very, very recently we were in a completely black box space uh, and able to work with sound where the speakers were hidden under the floor. So you've got three very different presentation environments that offer three different sets of challenges and tasks to us as the uh, collaborators on the project, to the venues in terms of what they're able to bring to the project and also to the artist in terms of well how is he or she going to modify the way that the work is going to be seen in that space and actually that's one of the nice things really is about going with the flow to an extent about how a space is going to change the work. It's about the, using the right kind of technology but it's also about how we approach the spaces that we're working with, how we modify those spaces to get the best out of the content. But it's one of the fun things about it.